Good evening, um, one and all. Um, I'm Hania Perez. I'm the Technical Assurance Manager at the Royal Institution of Naval Architects. So as um, Nathan already said, I come from the headquarters of the institution. I'm, I'm actually really happy to actually be here with the branch. I know the branch hasn't been for many years. It's still uh, been, been developed. I really see that uh, there's a lot of interest, um, really eager members of the branch. So uh, as always, that's what we as the institution want to um, further support. So um, uh, as uh, I've been informed, have about uh, 45 minutes. Hopefully I, I do it in less time, so I'll leave this more time for a question and answers, because what I'm actually here is to answer your questions and most importantly, see how everyone in this room, uh, online and in general in the brands can actually get involved uh, more with the institution that is not just us, that the institution is every, every member and every person that is interested in naval architecture in general. So, just to talk about, about my, myself, just to let you know about the, uh, the speak itself. So, I'm a naval architect and marine engineer. So, I'm also a PhD researcher in the Polytechnic in UPM in Spain. But I, I was also a, um, um, a marine in the, in the, in the Spanish uh, naval forces. Um, I've done a bit in the industry on the port, uh, port maneuvering, stability, also in trains, uh, yacht surveyor, and also a skipper, because obviously we need to enjoy ourselves, not just the set the ships, but actually do, do get, get on board. Um, just um, a bit, bit of historical part of uh, my family, actually the, um, the port of uh, Liverpool was where my grand grandfather grand used to bring grapes uh, for, from uh, Almeria. Almeria used to be the um, the, the port in which grapes uh, came, came actually, yeah, actually 60% of the UK trade in grapes in between the uh, late 19th century and early 20th century actually came from here. So it's, I, 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 today I don't bring grapes. Today I, I bring you something uh, different, but maybe you'll say, call it a, a bit of uh, just a bit of information, a bit of bread and just uh, food for thought, as they say. So anyway, without further ado, uh, what is RENA? So RENA, we are a land society. We were founded in 1860, so more than 160 years ago. And what our purpose is just to promote the uh, art and science of ship design. Nowadays, what that is really means is that we are an international institution, about 10,000 members worldwide, 36 branches, six regions, 76 uh, university engaged. And obviously, we have international links with IMO and ISO and many, many others um, around the world. However, this is all facts that any member or any, uh, let's say, interested person from the public could actually go. So this is not the, the this presentation. What I want you to, to know is a bit about the history, why RENA was founded, what is actually a land society, and how you can get involved. So obviously, we just mentioned 1860. So this is actually a map of London, late uh, 19th century. And obviously I could say, oh, we are really old. This is an old map and we can call it a day. However, I'm not here for this. What I, what I want is just to keep, uh, give that a background. I promised it at HQ that I wouldn't go too far in history because I could know I'll board uh, everyone. How, however, if uh, we do understand what a land society is, they were actually part of what it was founded in the 17th century. So obviously, uh, you'll know these people. Uh, there's uh, Newton and Leibniz. They actually did a lot of uh, infinitesimal uh, calculus. And that's part of, part of what um, the 17th century was about. It was applying science. In this in, in, in our area will be science to ship construction. So obviously, the strength, uh, more studies in strength of material and calculus and stability actually brought us the beam theory, quadrature, and metacenter. And if you see here, that will be Pierre Bouvier's initial ideas in the uh, how how to calculate the metacenter. Now this is a bit, a bit more complex, a bit more accurate, if you want, but those will be like the incipient, uh, um, let's say, um, analysis. So scientific societies. We said arena to learn society. Um, if we just trace back to the early start of the scientific societies, uh, it was briefly the Invisible College what actually brought us the Royal Society. 
which is still uh, still ongoing. And after three uh, three years, uh, we end up having these transactions. And transactions, at the, um, even even today, are the backbone of any institution. That's where the all the uh, knowledge of the institution is actually transferred. And uh, I wanted also to, to indicate that it was not only the Royal Society, but close in time as well uh, from France, you have you have the Académie des Sciences that did a, a similar type of a journal, and they get prices, and there was kind of an incentive. What is interesting is actually both both of them, although they have similar objective, one came from actually industry, or in this case, the scientist itself. However, in 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 kind of in in, in France and every country that was influenced by the way in France uh, science was developed. It was from the, um, the actual institutions. So uh, uh, that will be either from the king or the ministries would actually push the, the, uh, those uh, scientists to do that research. Whereas in the UK, it was industry based. So it was the interest of the, of the whole um, um, yeah, scientists for that. Now, I also wanted to mention the Royal Swedish Academy because they, they also did, did work. However, they didn't in Swedish. At the time, even today, not many people speak Swedish. So that limited a lot how the, um, how the um, information gets transferred. And that's, that's one of the important things. We, we need to always find common ground to actually uh, um, be able to share that, that knowledge. Um, in this case, the work from Chapman was was translated to uh to, to French to make uh, make that just make that bridge and actually give that that info information. So why Rina? We said uh, we talked about the Royal Society and that was quite um, ambitious if you want to say or a bit general. And even even today we're we're going going to more of a concrete and more um, focused kind of uh, societies and even studies at university were saying that now you don't study a, a general science degree, normally it's just targeted, that, and the same happened here. So as, as, uh, as, um, um, as it was, uh, the science was developing, so, so, so did the societies. And obviously there, there were some, some initial testing um, uh, actually uh, financed by, by members of those societies. That did, it, for example, in 1761, some uh, some some tests, for example, in the Curly uh, pool in London. However, where Green actually finds is uh, his uh, more history will be in the Society for for the Improvement of Naval Architecture, which was founded in 1791 and actually supported the work of Marc Buffon, that did similar work as we already um, saw in the in this picture, and and it was a uh, bit of a lot of work on hydrodynamics in different uh, with with different uh, whole shapes. What what is interesting is this one had, was really short lived, and they actually the admission was to to Guinea if you if you wanted to do for for a year. So obviously they needed to be financed. However, what they had is like a twenty guineas uh, for life membership. But if you see, it only lasted three years. So I don't think it was the best investment. So Rina, Rina, Rina was actually uh, once, as we said, the uh, uh, the uh, Society for Improvement of Naval Architecture cl closed shop. One year, years after, there was still that that interest to actually bring the progress of naval architecture and actually de develop it. And some some uh, some um, engineers of the time they decided to form a society. Which in the sixteenth uh, of January of eighteen sixty, they they and they actually uh, started this uh, this society with we who are present do not constitute ourselves an institution of naval architects for the purpose of advancing science and art of naval architecture. One of those person of those people were was actually Scott Russell, and Scott Russell now in this uh, image you you see him in the launch of SS Great Eastern, and that's that's. With the Brunel um, on the second on the right, and this was uh, this launch was actually two years before the uh, the start of the um, of of Rina, well, the establishment of Rina, and that is actually quite a, quite, a, quite interesting because even then they, they were still still seeing that they needed to um, to aggregate uh, that that knowledge and 
kind of, and, and do support each other in, in that. And the first paper, uh, because we already said about the, the importance of the journals. So the first paper that actually was present was on the present state of the mathematical theory of naval architecture. That was done by Reverend Joseph Woolley. And it is of no one's surprise that actually he took that interest in, in mathematics, as he was the principal of, the, of mathematics and naval architecture in, at, um, at Portugal. Naval Academy. So we're talking about the, we just mentioned about the SS uh, graduation. So the RINA was established in a really interesting time. We, we're always saying that we are in a pivotal time of history. There's all these changes around. But in this case, there, there were two main things that there were changed. What, one was propulsion, and the other one was the materials we used to, to, uh, to build those ships. In, this, uh, in the case of the materials, you, you had in 1819 um, uh, the, the Vulcan, which is considered the first iron ship to be built, and it was a barge. And again, going back to what was published at the time, in our transactions, we, we start to, to see a lot of, a, a lot of uh, papers, so quite prevalent, on the, the use of iron in ship, in ship construction. You may, you may think, yeah, iron, and not many years after, we had in 1866 the, the first uh, paper on the, yeah, of the use of steel in, in ship construction. So we, I just mentioned about propulsion and paddles and screw propellers what would, would be the preferable uh, means of, of propulsion when using steam. However, oars were, were also t tested, however, with not much uh, success. So, flow adoption. We're talking about 1860s. And if you would try to think how things were at the time, there were still a lot of um, ships that you sell. And actually, by 1860, only 10, around 10% of ships worldwide were actually uh, a steamship. And why is that? Because there was not, not really a hundred um, coal supply and also boiler safety. And anyone that, that now um, starts to think about that is really similar to our current conversation of how we're go going to um, propel ships with new alternative fuels. We're still talking about hundred supply now. And obviously the safety of the use of those, uh, of those alternative fuels, which again, goes back to the boiler safety. So, so we are kind of repeating history, only, only changing names. However, RINA wants always to be on the forefront of that conversation. So what was the boost? And as you may all know, uh, years, years after, in um, 1869, uh, the Suez Canal opened. And again, that actually led for better coal, coal supply as we may already mentioned, and also an improvement on the, on the efficiency and safety of, of the boilers already mentioned. And Joseph de Aguilar, actually a year after the, um, the opening of the Suez Canal in 18, 1870, already um, had a paper on the influence of the Suez Canal on open navigation. So we already mentioned about go, going to use coal. And there was also the conversation in the in the early um, 1900s about the use of, of um, the move from coal to oil. And again, same question: Are those efficient? Are those safe? And most importantly, um, is there enough supply of what is actually the, the route? Again, in this case, Milton, even the year before of the ship that, uh, that, it was, uh, that was in the background, which is the Selandia, considered the first ship of the large ship using uh, diesel, diesel engines. So then well, we had a paper from John Milton on diesel engines, talking about the future of those ships, who actually Milton was an engineer for Lloyd's Register, and obviously really, um, and, and was actually present on the trials of that ship. So that brings us today. And the question that everyone asks now is, what is a naval architect? Because I, I would say no, no one really knows, because it, they are involved in every aspect of the industry, inside, outside, construction, design, 
management. So that's the, it, it is a really broad um, a, a spectrum. However, just wanted to show a, a, few, a few examples of what they are currently involved. Rina, we already mentioned uh, about the uh, society of the improvement of the naval architecture. They have fees and they have also a structure. We also have now um, as, uh, more and more than secure or safe and established way or in which one enters as a student member. So you're still in a, a degree in, in maritime. You, uh, you have interest in the institution. It's actually free to, uh, to, um, to be a member as a, uh, as a full-time student, which is always a, a, a benefit. Then you become an associate mem member once you finish your, your degree. Then just be, be becoming a member once you not only reach the academic um, requirements, but also the, the knowledge in, in industry. And after you, you receive um, a few years of actual uh, um, higher management or higher level in, in engineering, or, uh, that's when you become a fellow of the institution. I'm more than happy later after, after this presentation to kind of this, even this, uh, this discuss uh, personal or, or at least specific questions of, of that route. Benefits, we're, we're talking about this structure, but what does it really mean for any, uh, any, um, any member of the institution? There are, there are many benefits. It's not just being able to fund your fellow and Rina and Rina or Frina. It's, it's, it's more about what you can do with it and, and also the, um, the heritage that, that accompanies it. There's a lot of uh, gravitas. However, there's also a lot of ways in which you can get, get involved. We, we do publish, and you saw it in the entrance, that we do publish uh, mag different uh, magazines. We have the journal, which is the, the oldest in purely um, in naval architecture. And also we publish a lot of other publications that are done with the uh, VAs and give you like really good uh, Techni uh, techni technical information such as significant SIP studies on the um, yearly. Also, you can say about the um, access to the to our library, which is actually a physical library in London. However, we do understand that not everyone has the option to actually go there. So we do have a library. We do for our, uh, for the membership. We do facilitate a di digital record of the every publication. That we have actually published, which uh, which is one additional one, and obviously regular um, news e-newsletter, e just to just to be aware of not only what the institution is doing, but what the rest of industry is doing. Because at the end of the day, Rina is not also a um, learned society, a member of institution, but also we are a platform that 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 communicates both with academia, with industry, our members. And be, and be that, that whole package of communication. Again, we do, as we said, we do publications, but also we do conferences. The, uh, our, our conferences are highly technical. We, uh, we do have a focus on what the engineers are actually involved with, what we're we doing, what, how, um, how can be solved. And one example will be next month. We have the, uh, with the Mesh McKinley Muller Center, we're actually doing a, a a, a conference on and then zero carbon seating, so on decarbonization, and actually it's a three-day conference on uh, specifically on so solving uh, that problem in the um, in, in the maritime space. Also, we have training. Uh, maybe uh, some of you already seen, but we have uh, specific courses. One of them would be dry docking, and uh, that that is, and those are actually external. Um, lecturers or trainers that actually do uh, do, uh, do that with the quality assurance of, of the institution. We also serve for networking and we kind of try to get, have a healthy social media presence. So, some, uh, sometimes it, it is um, it is a challenge with uh, with so many so many other um, organizations and many other posts. However, we try to keep us as relevant to our membership. Anyway, another interesting thing, and 
that is actually supported by the, uh, by the magazines and other publications, is that we want to inform, but also we want debate. We want our members to be, to be interested. And one, one example will be for the, um, <clears throat> in, in this one, on, on safety, which, which we want, what we wanted is to shed, uh, uh, bring a light on, on, on this, uh, this in really, uh, really important case that maybe the editor of uh, decided to call it death traps. How, how, and, and that definitely got, got a lot of our, our members a bit aroused. We're good designers. The enclosed space is it, it is it is an issue and needs to be a, needs, needs a lot of uh, thought, thought to it. So we were really happy to see that from the July August issue of enclosed space um, article in Ship and Body International, we actually got in the next issue a lot of comments from from our from our readers that that actually get, gave that um, that view of yes people actually acknowledge. I, I, want, I want to make, make, make it better, and obviously in a in a good good platform for, to um to uh to show in some cases the disconform and in, and, and in others actually say, um, find ways to to solve it. So Rina Future, I believe some of you already seen that there's a lot of rebranding. We've had 1960 um after more than uh, yeah 160 years. This, we kind of felt a bit stagnated in our image, and we tried to find, make it a more appealing, if you want, if you want to say that, or, or at least it's easier or more interesting for, for a younger audience as well. And that's, that's part of what we've done. But that would be seeing it at least not, not, in, not in depth. What we really wanted is to kind of change the, how the whole institution talks to the uh, to the members, how we talk to the industry, how we um, how, what tools are we using? So we are way 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 past the time of sending an actual uh, in the uh, a partial actually signed by hand. Obviously, there's there's much more uh, tools that that you can use. We're in one of one of the things we're transforming institution into a um, Microsoft Dynamics um, <clears throat> whole, uh, whole package in which a mem mem uh, membership the, um, uh, and all, all our communication channels do, do actually serve in a, in a more efficient way. Um, so yeah, that's, the, that's mainly what, uh, what part of our digital transformation is. Also, we're really conscious about quality. We're currently doing all, uh, the auditing for the ISO 9001 and the, and many 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 other changes that you will that you will see, I believe, in short short term, maybe two months, three years months. So branches, and that's why I came to you here today, to a, to a branch meeting. So how does it really work, the branch? Because establishing a branch is good. You do communicate with the HQ and say I want to be a build branch, but Branches don't really exist if there's no members. So members, again, are the backbone of the, the institution. As, as we always say, we are the, st uh, the staff we support. So the secretary actually supports the, uh, the, the members who actually are what the institution is. So we have it here. And it's, it's always the question of how do I get engaged with uh, So. The first port of call of everyone ends up in their branch, and then in the branch you do the these um, presentations, you do networking, and all that. However, there's also the council and the board of trustees you see um, up there that will be the governance of the institution. So actually, the institution is governed by the members, not not the not the staff. And the and then you see on the left hand side is the committee. So we do have technical committees. They do discuss. One of them will be the, the one that uh, says, says uh, IMO. And IMO is because we're a non-government organization that actually fits into IMO. Um, then, the, uh, then you see the safety committee, which is actually our oldest committee and discusses uh, lately. They mainly have been discussed about the fires in um, container ships. And innovation, professional affairs, membership publications. So the, 
and all is actually governed by the members that do come in in those committees as, as volunteers and are engaged uh, in the day-to-day -day activities. I already mentioned that what we are is a platform for members to talk to industry, to academia, and back and forth. That's, that, that has to be a um, whole, whole circle there. Also, one of the new things that, uh, that we, we introduced was having a student representative for, for Liverpool. Do we have it back there, David? Um, yeah, so as I say, RINA engages with big bodies, industry credit, and corporate partners. I didn't talk about the right-hand side, and it's actually the career path. We, we did say that the, you, you start as a student, and RINA what wants is to accompany you, to go with, with and support you all the way from being a student to actually becoming a, a fellow. And that, that is actually the whole career that, that, a, uh, that a, an engineer will be doing. How we do it? Mostly with the, um, with the CBD and all the benefits that, that I already mentioned in previous slides. And there you are. Just in the middle, divisions and branches. We just said about active involvement. What does it mean? It means that we do have a few committees that, that, that are working thoroughly to um, figure which are the important topics or the important issues that they see in industry. They get, they get together, they, dis they, uh, they, uh, they discuss, they produce documentation that then this gets fit into the uh, to the discussions normally the, of the IMO, but also with our corporate partners and other other interested parties. And there are branches which do a similar in a, is in a, is smaller is, is I wouldn't call it a smaller case, but the, the thing is that the, the branches are actually the networking groups in every in every hub, and that's that and they they are the ones that they eventually fit into all, uh, all the committees. So what are we actually doing as, a, as the institution? For example, we are, we are engaged with the working groups from the MS McKinley Muller Center. That will be uh, one of the uh, um, on, ongoing projects. As I say, I'm a committee. We are an NGO with consultative status at IMO, which, is, which is mean, what it means is we do sit in every meeting. We do attend the working groups. We we're part of the discussion. However, we don't vote, but we are the technical authority where this, what those discussions are being held. And things, for example, we do we do produce papers, and also we support some of the papers. In this case, there was a change in the um, EXI, um, uh, and, and it actually was presented with, um, by Binko and Rina last year, and it was about the use of the, the reference field when you are calculating EEXI, which we have already seen that there's some discrepancies depend, depending on who's actually taking those, um, uh, those numbers. And also, now, just as I said last year, this year, we're a SW uh, SOLAS uh, in Humble, and actually it's been ha it will happen next week. And we uh, one thing that I didn't mention is we don't only have uh, in, uh, naval architects as our, as our members. For example, in this specific uh, meeting, it's actually um, a former master mariner, the one that is engaged in the in, the, in those conversations in, in Hamburg. All that will be a, a paper from uh, sent to uh, MEP, to be discussed at MEPC uh, 79 in December. Also, um, cost for uh, co sponsor the paper in good proportion. And this again, EXI and EDI. So, uh, we have a minor clarification uh, that uh, uh, because of the um, some auxiliary um, proposal, well, the auxiliary um, and just uh, consumption also is not too clear at the moment in the, in the um, regulation. And that's actually been submitted in, for, uh, in September. So for SDC in next year, we'll be built pumping and also energy power limitation. So there were our IMO actually attended that, uh, that meeting. For the ones that don't remember, because I didn't remember where it actually was in the, in the rules, 
such as we saw us stop the two for one regulation 25 one. Well, you can see building. I know here livable, that, that is a strong topic. It is, it is really, really interested. And one thing that I want and this really sort of wanted to mention is actually the UK shipbuilding strategy, the current one. It's um, that's actually the fundamentals were actually laid by in, by Sir John Parker, which was arena president between uh, ninety six and ninety nine. Well, other things we do our work. So uh, I'm I'm on our, our activities. We 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 um. Get, uh, see which are the relevant topics. In this case, was uh, in is innovation and safety, and we find the relevant partners that that want to uh, uh, support those awards. And uh, last last year was given uh, for the innovation to Norwegian um, society uh, for the Gate Brothers. So those are being developed in a trust like a university, and the um, and maritime safety to the worldwide safety. Um, Ferry Safety Association. In the middle, you see one inter uh, really important one. It's actually the EDQ Award, and that was given to Valista. The EDQ Award is for Equality, Diversity, and Inclusion. And that, that award actually has the name of, of one of the first female members of the institution. I had in 1911 one of the uh, most, uh, well, the first paper that was uh, co authored by, by a female engineer. One interesting thing is that um, uh, uh, a few months, well, a month ago, we went to, uh, to Japan. We have ICAS conference, and we actually gave the, the award to Noriyuki Sasaki in person, which was he was really pleased to, to see. So all the awards we have the Peter Contreras Award or the Best Student Awards, and there are many around the, the country, different universities. Do you, you have that uh, that that award? This case, I wanted to point this one out because um, our um, a former uh, president of the institution, Mauricio Danico, will, will be the one on the on the right. With Chris Boyd, our current chief exec, will will be in, is in the left. So, your projects. I, th I think that's actually something that is quite a, a novel thing nowadays. A lot of companies do do engage with 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 those. And we are actually um, part of a proud PhD as, a, um, um, as, a, as an institution. And we, we, we also uh, register uh, for that. Student involvement. I already said that we have a student rep here. And we've seen and we already talked about the, uh, this, the member staff. And that starts uh, with a student member. Uh, we, uh, we, we feel that that's uh, the uh, the students logically are the future of the, of the institution, but also are the future of the shipbuilding industry in general, and we want to support them uh, as much as possible. However, we all understand that they they, they have a studies to to do. They, there's um, uh, uni university. You have a lot of uh, stimulus. So so we set up a, a few initiatives to actually um, cater better to them to help them. Both getting a base publications, but but also uh, get, get involved with the institution. And why? Because that gives them professional uh, development, networking, source of information. We all we are always, even though we have a massive library in every university, it's always a struggle to find the latest the latest information, and that's really what we're really for. And obviously, to have the these initiatives are to have a direct contact. With the, with the institution, so that's why we created the, the student representative, which I already have said that David is here in in Liverpool. STEM activities, and we're going even younger. So we we said that we want the student members that are studying at the university. However, to have new naval architects, you you cannot just go to actually first year university. They already decided. They already even decided when before taking eight level. So what we're getting is involved in initiatives that are catered to even a younger, uh, younger demographic to actually tell them that it's future in maritime. There's a, a really interesting life that they can actually have if if they decide to uh, become 
naval architects or even marine engineers. Um, and that we have one, one of them will be mostly engineering in the UK, that will be a massive one. But then there's, there's more focused one, a SICAN engineer, which is doing a fantastic job with uh, getting, getting more um, girls involved in engineering in, in general. But obviously what we try is not engineering, but in maritime, and even better if they become naval architects. So, uh, is all talk? I, I would say no. Um, and we do, as I say, at the university, I just came uh, from, uh, from Southampton, uh, first year students. However, there's, the, there's also uh, the Kennedy Power Gold that we went in, in July. And I was talking about the uh, SIGAN engineer, and you'll see the mini carriers there that, that, were, that we were um, uh, with them showing what a kind of naval architecture do. There, there was a I would say pretty pretty good interest about it, not only because we had really nice uh, tote bags that they could take home, but also that there was a nice magazine, big pictures, so that, that was also a plus. Social media. I think everyone is using uh, well, everyone uses it almost every day. Well, maybe maybe not you that that you downgraded your phone, but <laughs> it's been, anyway, the um so, so we go on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, <coughs> LinkedIn, and also YouTube. And a lot of these um, brands' presentations are actually available on YouTube and also conferences or part of conferences that, that we do uh, at, um, at, at its headquarters uh, and also uh, around the world. What you can get from social media. Um, maybe you want to go and, and meet us. In this case, will be a post of a, a decimal, or you want to nominate someone from for an award. I I must mention that the Martin Safety Award, the Elikir Award, and the uh, Innovation Award is uh, is um we, uh, is uh, nomination are open until January 20, uh, 2023. So if if uh, I would really encourage every anyone to actually go go on the website. And, and nominate someone or a company that, that you think that actually deserves that award. We also inform about um, conferences. We're proposing that will be in February at, at IMO would be an example. But also, and something that I don't think people do, do actually know, we sometimes do get involved in different uh, media. And in this case, with Sky History, we participated in The Secret of Lost Liner, which was a documentary on on, on the different liners, uh, which the first one was about the Normandy. And that will be for, um, all, all from my side. I welcome any question and thank you much for your attention.